Hey there, this is Kyle Kruger. No. Hey man, what's... Uh, hola, guys. It's... Uh, hey dudes, uh, my name is Kyle Kruger. Uh, God damn it! Okay. My name is Kyle Kruger. If you guys don't know me personally, I am a huge wrestling fan. And I love wrestling. And this is my very first podcast, and I promise you I'm not going to be like JR or Stone Cold or Chris Jericho. I just want to be my own, you know, podcast guy. And today we are going to talk about, well, something that I've done in my DeviantArt. And that's my C slash R WrestleMania. What does that mean? Well, C means change or an R means rebook. It's where I change a bad match of a, of a, of a good WrestleMania or, or rebook a really crappy WrestleMania. It's just that it's something that I always like to do, you know, rebook or change WrestleManias, you know, because because I felt like, you know, it kind of sucks that we do have bad WrestleManias, but without the bad, we wouldn't have the good. I mean, without WrestleMania 9, we wouldn't have WrestleMania 10, and without WrestleMania 11, we wouldn't have WrestleMania 12. <sighs> man, I... Man, I keep stuttering, so I'm sorry. But, anyways... Uh, today, I'm going to rebook WrestleMania 11, which is considered by many to be the worst WrestleMania ever. It gets two thumbs down, in my opinion, but I think with rebooking and making the show a little longer, and, and if it's executed well, we could have had a good WrestleMania. So I was thinking that maybe I should rebook this one. Now, this is going to be a hard one because... I had to go through every story. I had to make some of my own storylines and all that other stuff up. And here's the thing. Th I changed some... See, the first episode of my C-slash-R WrestleManias on DVR was WrestleMania 11. And the thing is, is that I act That was last year. Now, I changed some rules and I changed, changed some matches here and there. So this is going to be extremely different from my WrestleMania... So one of the things I'm going to take out from this WrestleMania is all the celebrities. Except Lawrence Taylor, because he actually did have kind of a purpose. And no, I'm not keeping the Lawrence taylor Bam Bam Bigelow match, because I will change that. So, let's do this. So, unlike the original WrestleMania 11, which was seven matches, I'm going to make it, let's say, um... 10 matches. First, we have the opening match. Match number one. The Allied Powers, Lex Luger and Davy Boy Smith, a.k.a. the British Bulldog, versus the Million Dollar Corporation, which is represented by Tatanka and IRS. Well, the opening match was the, was the Allied Powers versus... The Blue Brothers, which were the Harris Brothers, Don and Ron Harris. And, well, they kind of sucked as the Blue Brothers. There was no story to, to the original opening match. It was just, well, two, four guys, eyes fighting each other. That was it. And it was kind of sloppy. It was, well, not entertaining. Just... Not entertaining, if you get what I mean. I'd rather see, uh, let's see, um, two kids fighting over a truck than this. It would be more entertaining than that. No, no, it wouldn't. So, I decided that maybe I gotta change it up a little bit. A little bit. So, so the story is, is that Luger is still pissed off that Tatanka betrayed him and joined the Million Dollar Dollar Corporation back at SummerSlam 1994. So, I was thinking that Luger, with the help of with his partner, the British Bulldog, challenges Tatanka. Tatanka accepts the challenge, and he says it's a tag team challenge, and Tatanka picks IRS for his partner because, well, well the Million Dollar Corporation needs to stick together. And I was thinking that maybe maybe the Million Dollar Corporation w should win. As much as I do like like the Allied Power, I was thinking that maybe a heel should win. 
this match. Tatanka uses his finishing move, move on Lex Luger, pins Luger, one, two, three. Million Dollar Corporation wins this one. And let's go on to match number two, which is Scott Hall, a.k.a. Razor Ramon, versus Double J, Jeff Jarrett, for the Intercontinental Championship. As much as WrestleMania 11 sucked, there was two good matches for this horrible WrestleMania. One was Shawn Michaels versus Kevin Diesel Nash, which, well, I will get to when we talk about it later. And this will end Razor Ramon versus Scott Hall. Oh, I have to admit, it was actually a good match. Match. It's not the best IC title WrestleMania match, but at least it was a very good one. So I'm going to keep this match the same. Even have Scott Hall win by, by DQ. So everything went well. Match number three. Sean Waltman, or as he was called back then, the one, two, three kid, and Sparkplug Bob Holly versus Stephen Dunn and Timothy Well, aka Well Done, manage by Harley Quinn. Now this is just a match I wanted to put in because I want because a I actually really do like the one, two, three kid and Bob. Ho Holly tag team and B I wanted to show more of their talent by giving them a Wrestlemania match with a very underrated and well really good tag team well done I mean well done was a pretty good tag team and it kind of felt and it kind of sucked that well the WWE didn't use them well I mean Sure, there are times where they have their moments of awesomeness, but I felt like the WWE could have used them. They could have used them to become tag team champions or just something like that. Plus, they were managed by Harley Whippleman, one of the greatest managers of all time. And you gotta admit, that's kind of cool. But, sadly, we live in a world where kind of, you well, know, people do get wasted. So, I was thinking the story for this... Very much is that. Sorry, um, or is that an ep story? Is that an episode of Raw? Raw, well done. Is jealous that the one, two, three kid and and Bob Holly beat them in the tournament. Wanting revenge on them, they start attacking them on Raw. Ah, one, two, three kid and Bob Holly decided to settle the score with a good old fashioned tag team match at WrestleMania. This could have, be one of the. This could be one of those fast-paced WrestleMania tag team match where there's a lot of go back and forth with the teams and very much like a lot of great moves and just everything else, man. So I was thinking that that well, Bob Holly should quick pin one of them to win the match, and. And for this match, Harley Whippleman could try helping Well Done win because, you know, he's a, he's a heel manager and stuff. And heel managers like to cheat. Neat. And overall, overall, this can give 1-2-3-Kid and Bob Holly's tag team a WrestleMania moment. Match number four. Duke the Dumpster Drozzy versus Kama, a.k.a. The Godfather. In a singles match. Now, if you guys don't know me, like, personally or as a wrestling fan, here's something. I actually do like Duke the Dumpster Drozzy. I mean, his character, in my opinion, was fun. And I can understand why people don't like his character. It's not for everybody, but I just liked it. I, I like the fact that they got a guy that fits this garbage man gimmick. And it's just... I just really like it, you know? And it was just... It was one of the better things in the new generation era, in my opinion. So, I was thinking that maybe I should just give Duke the Dumpster Drozzy uh, a WrestleMania match. But which which wrestler? Maybe from the Million Dollar Corporation, I was thinking of Kama. Uh, if you don't know who Kama is, he's uh, Charlie Wright, he's the Godfather, and Papa Shanga, Anga. 
Um, but mostly as the Godfather. But the thing is, is that, see, I'm, see, in my story, I'm sorry, I'm just using the power of my imagination, that, um, the story is that, is that, is that the, the Million Dollar Corporation attacked Duke the Dumpster Drozzy when he was interviewed by Jerry the King Lawler and Duke wants revenge on him and Duke makes a deal. Eel. If he wins, he gets one of Kama's gold chains. And million and a thousand dollars. So and Ted DiBiase, not like, not liking this, decides. Well, I want Com I want I if Kama's is going to not get if Kama's is going to save his chains, he's going to fight him. At him. So we get to this match, and it's very much like you know just you know like a bit like like two tough guys like fighting, and you know. Like, the match is, like, in my opinion, it's, like, eight minutes. So, here's what I'm going to do with this match. Uh, Duke the Dumpster Drozzy wins. He beats Kama. And... And... Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, and he gets Kama's gold chain, and he gets $1,000. And Ted's like, no, 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 no. You know, like, he's freaking out, you know. And stuff like that, you know, just like that. Match number five for the World Tag Team Championships. We had the champions and the the smoking guns versus which the smoking guns are Billy and Bart Gun versus Men on a Mission, Mavel, and Mo with Oscar. That's right. We got Cowboys versus Rappers. Now the original ta uh, World Tag Team match was the Smoking Guns versus the team of Owen Hart and the mystery opponent. And the mystery opponent, by the way, spoilers alert, was Yokozuna. Yokozuna. Yokozuna, sorry. But the thing is, that match wasn't good. I mean, don't get me wrong, Owen Hart and Yokozuna was a good team. But... I mean, how they form and them winning is good. It's just this match wasn't a great start to this really awesome tag team. Oh, man. So, I have to change it because I'll do something later with Owen Hart and I will do something later with Yokozuna. You're going to like what I do with that. So, anyways, let's start the storyline. So in this epic story of of, our, of two rappers defeating two Western cowboy stereotypes, the smoking guns, when they won the title, they start to become cocky and arrogant. However, they become heels, and they start to attack any team. And and they had an encounter with Mel on a mission, and they you and they cheated, cheated by, and they cheated. He did, uh, they well they screwed over the me men on a mission for the world titles and they kept it. Oscar, Mabel, and Mo are pissed off and guess what they're going to do? They're going to get get those titles. And you know how they're going to get those ti titles? By challenging them to a WrestleMania match. Now, I will have the guns regain the, t the, the titles because I will admit this match is going to be about let's just say here uh let's say eight minutes and guess what like actually no not eight minutes maybe maybe ten minutes we can have a, a cool match between these two because I love Men on a Mission and I really do like the Smoking Guns. Even though their gimmicks aren't the best, they do have good chemistry. So I was thinking that having having the heavyweight weight Men on a Mission versus the lightweight quick draw quick draw Smoking Guns and very much actually anything else, the Smoking Guns retain. And a few weeks later, the Men on a Mission turn heel and attack Oscar. However, the the Raw after WrestleMania 11, Owen and Yokozunu get the tag team belts off the Smoking Guns by beating them. Well, it's better than having a crappy WrestleMania match. It's much better to have a Raw match, you know. But 
Who am I to judge? Match number six. Atom Bomb versus Bob Backlund. The Atomic Bomb versus the Ticking Time Bomb. Ugh. Oh my god. Oh. Let's talk about Bret Hart versus... Bob Backlund at WrestleMania 11. This is Bret Hart's worst WrestleMania match. I hate this match so much. It, it's not even good. You would think that Bob Backlund and Bret Hart had a really good match at Survivor Series 1994 would actually have a good WrestleMania match. No, no, no. It wasn't good. Good. Watching... Bret Hart versus Bob Backlund WrestleMania 11 is like watching a horrible sequel to an otherwise good movie. <laughs> oh my. Not even Rowdy Rowdy Piper could have saved this match. And he was the special guest referee. Uh, so I'm going to give Bret some other match and I'm going to give and I'm going to make this Adam Bomb versus Bob Backlund. So, how about this? How about in an episode in a bunch of episodes of Raw, uh Bob Back Bob Backlund is just extremely mad that he is no longer the WWF champion, that he's willing to take his anger his frustrations, his emotions, his craziness out on the world. And the first person he and the first person he does it is some he starts destroying, he starts defeating others and just destroying them. And then he meets his match. This angry, raging beast, this compelling destruction man. Find somebody that's nothing like him, but has the definition of a bomb, Adam. And guess what? Bob Backlund learned when he was when he defeat when he def when Bob Backlund got defeated by Adam Bomb in an episode of Raw. He learned that there was somebody, somebody that cannot. That cannot defeat his signature move. So, sorry about that. I was taking some speech classes. Nah, I wasn't taking speech classes. Sorry, it's just my head, you know. So I was thinking, since Bob Backlund can't defeat him, he decides that if he can't defeat Adam Bomb, Bomb, and he can't, he can't defeat Adam, so Adam, so he wants to challenge him to something that he's good at. He can't use his signature move, but he can use his craziness on him, his wit, to defeat him. And Adam accepts the challenge. Adam at this point is a face, ace, but guess what? He says to Bob Backlund, and I quote, I am a bomb, and I will destroy you any time, any day. So, this match is like, let's see here, uh, 12 minutes long. And I want this match to have suspense and shock and just, you know, just signature, you know, like, even though, oh, and spoilers alert, even though Adam beats Bob Backlund, Bob Backlund was a challenge. I mean, Adam Bomb, a.k.a. Brian Clark, is a big dude, and he has to deal with a guy that's smaller but also tougher than he is. You gotta admit, that takes a lot of guts. However, ever, this could be a tough opponent for Adam, and it will be. And that, and that, 
match number seven. The Blue Brothers, Eli Blue and Jacob Blue, a.k.a. the Harris Brothers, Ron and Don Harris, with Uncle Zeb, versus the Head Stringers, Salone and Fatu, with Captain Lou Albino. Albano? Albano, sorry. <laughs> now I do have something for Don and Ron. Ron Harris's Blue Brothers gimmick, and it's a WrestleMania match. So here's what happens. See, in a match between Fatu and Fatu and Eli Blue, Lou, Captain Lou Albano and and Uncle Zeb were fighting with each other, punching each other, and just you know just having war with each other, utter, utter. And due to that, Salone, alone and. And Eli were fighting as well, and just it all became this big giant bra. You know, everything about it just became this one giant bra. Brawl, brawl. <sighs> Sorry, uh, oh man, I cannot talk. Fucking, but, but, anyways, anyways, the Settle the Feud WrestleMania match. Match, match. For them, for them, it was probably seven minutes, but both these teams did their best, and guess what happened? The Head Shrinkers, Salone, and Fatu won. The battle was over. Match number eight. Bam Bam Bigelow versus The Undertaker with Paul Bearer and Lawrence Taylor. Now, let's talk about two matches here. Two original matches were the main event, which was Bam Bam Bigelow versus Lawrence Taylor, which was just an okay match, but it wasn't a good main event. I mean, Lawrence Taylor tried, and he was probably the best celebrity of every of all the celebrities from WrestleMania 11. In fact, fun fact, there's no celebrities in, in this rebooking of WrestleMania 11. Wait, did I already told you that? Oh, God. Ugh. Sorry. <laughs> and then we have Undertaker versus King Kong Bundy. And oh, God. This, to me, is Undertaker's third worst WrestleMania match. The second and... And... And first one. Like the, like the worst matches for second and first place... In his WrestleMania matches. I'll get to them some other day. But. Oh god. It was slow. So. I was thinking that. Maybe I should replace. King Kong Bundy with Bam Bam Bigelow. And have the Lawrence Taylor. Bam Bam Bigelow connection. With Lawrence Taylor. Help. With Lawrence Taylor being on Undertaker's side. So. I want this match to be like. Let's say. 13 minutes, and I think Bam Bam Bigelow is the right opponent for The Undertaker. I mean, th I mean, this could be one of the best big, ma big man versus big man matches of WrestleMania. And guess what? But Taker just defeats, like, Taker just, Taker and Bam Bam just collide, like, how King Kong and Godzilla were colliding, I mean, like, like two forces, fire and darkness, just just nailing each other and just combining, just fighting with just power and just destruction. And just oh man, I'm, I mean that could have been a better. I mean I'm just thinking about right now that would have been an amazing WrestleMania match. So at the end, Undertaker choke slams, slams Bam Bam Bigelow, winning the match. And the Million Dollar, Dollar Corporation was was trying to attack, like Tatanka, King Kong Bundy, uh, Nik Nikolai Volvac, um, Arma, IRS. They were trying to attack the Undertaker, and guess what happens? Lauren Taylor's helps the Undertaker uh, beat the uh, the Million Dollar Corporation. Nation, like at, like this is after the match. I'm sorry, I, I didn't. Oh God. 
Man, this is my first podcast and I'm just like failing right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. And like, and like, me, like Undertaker's fourth match of the streak is match number nine. Bret the Hitman Hart versus Owen Hart. The WrestleMania match part two. Okay, we can all agree that Bret versus Owen at WrestleMania 10 is easily the best opening match in WrestleMania history. I mean, these two just put on one hell of a match. And I was thinking that since Bret and Owen are still having, you know, anger with each other, I was thinking maybe we can have the WrestleMania sequel match. And guess what happens? Owen has somebody in his corner, but it's not Jim the, the Anvil Nightheart. No, it's the man that beat his brother at WrestleMania 9. Oh yeah, it's Yokozuna who's in his corner. Now, I would have made this match, let's say, 20 minutes long. long. I want to make this the final chapter in the Brett versus versus Owen feud and this could help oh yokozuna does help owen but it's more of you know he just attacks brett when the ref is not looking you know helps him out and stuff like that and guess what happens brett uses the sharpshooter on owen owen taps out brett the hitman heart wins and guess what happens Owen and Yokozuna become a team. They beat the Smoking Guns the night after, after Raw. The night after the Raw after WrestleMania, sorry. And they become the World Tag Team Champions. Match number ten, the main event. The Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels versus the WWF Champion. Kevin Nash, a.k.a. Diesel. The main event. Now, I will admit that the admit that when I when I started this, I said that there were two great ma great matches in WrestleMania 11, the original WrestleMania 11. Well, one was Razor Ramon versus Jeff Jarrett. The other was Shawn Michaels versus. Diesel, which was the best match of the night and should have been the main event. And guess what? This match is going to be the same. It's We're going to keep it the same. It's just it's the main event. And I'm, I'm just saying, like, Kevin Nash, a.k.a. Diesel, versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 11 is a really damn good match. And just, you should check it out and watch it. Well... That's all I have. Man, for my first podcast, this was this was not my best moment, and I will admit that it's not, you know, the best, but I tried and I liked expressing my imagination and just you know, changing and you know, it this was a hard one to rebook because this was part of something, you know, but I did. And even though my ideas aren't the best, I will admit that I had fun doing this. And I will talk about wrestling more often when I have time doing my podcast. And I promise you that I'm going to rebook other WrestleManias when I have the time and talking to you guys and and change some bad matches in an otherwise good WrestleMania. So be on the lookout for that. As for that, I hope you guys loved my first podcast and I hope you guys liked my first like my rebooking WrestleMania 11 because I had a lot of fun and I'm sorry about the stuttering and all that stuff and sorry about man you know my throat is just you know, a little bit sour right now but guess what right now I'm just happy to do this podcast and I'm glad I have a voice and I'm going to speak my voice this is Kruger would have thought signing off